been trading, uh, what they've actively been following, and things along those lines. Jake, you want to kick us off? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, you know, I think most people would agree the sentiment's uh, been pretty, pretty damn bad. Uh, and it's just been a news driven market. And, you know, you've got a lot of people very, um, very convinced that the market's either going to keep tanking or keep going up. Uh, and so you've just got a lot of, a lot of very strong opinions right now, um, in the market. And so, you know, I think I, I don't have time to look at news every 10 minutes. So, you know, I don't know half the time if, if the market's moving on news or if it's just moving on just technicals. So uh, right now I, I'm not sure if the market's what exactly is moving it. Um, but you know, it's, it's definitely a, a market where you need to pretty much have a news source in front of you at all times. Um, and then, uh, and then recently I took a PayPal trade and funny enough got stopped out literally this morning. So that is uh, stinging a little bit, but uh, once again, as I mentioned, I don't love trading uh, into, into trips. I have a trip tomorrow. I'm going to see my brother's graduation from the air force. So I'll be out, you know, the next few days. So, you know, that was kind of the logic of just of stopping out and, and, uh, and not having anything really actively on the option side open into that. Um, and then on the common stock side of things, I do have BLNK. Uh, that is one that's doing pretty well. Um, and that's, that's one that kind of had some relative strength yesterday. So that was definitely a little bit of a, a uh, you know, signal that things may be turning there. So BLNK is one that I do have a, a decent common stock position in. Um, and, you know, I think that could probably move all the way up to the BWAP from the, uh, the November high, which is around 30 bucks. So that is definitely one that I think could move simply as a proxy to energy. So everyone's freaking out about oil BLNK is an EV charging station type company. So, you know, I think it's just that's where money's kind of flowing right now. You've seen it in uh, solar as well. So alternative sources of energy become a lot more economical when you um, when you have oil this high. So that is, you know, that's something that we saw even in, in 2008, 2009 when oil was just absolutely ramping up. Uh, solar and, and other alternative forms of energy were doing pretty good. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's kind of what I have my eye on. Uh, I do have my eye on GE as well. Um, so that's, that's one that I'm keeping an eye on. Uh, but like I said, uh, going into the next few days, I, I probably won't be doing too much active trading with traveling and, and just being with family, uh, for my brother's graduation. But, um, you know, I, you know, I think the sentiment was so bad you kind of had to have a flush this morning. You know, you had your Shopify's of the world kind of filled gaps. You had the PayPal fill its gap. So it's not, not really shocking to see these gaps filling and getting a little bit of a, uh, a, uh, a, a reversal here. But, you know, I, I'm still, I'm still thinking that the fed pulls back on their, their interest rate hike um, this month. I could be wrong, but, you know, go look at oil. If you want, uh, if you want interest rates to uh, increase to slow down, uh, slow things down a little bit, uh, you don't need that with the way oil's uh, moving. So that's why I'm thinking maybe, maybe the market's pricing in the Fed kind of pulling back a little bit. I mean, go look in 2016. The Fed was supposed to raise rates in March of 2016, and they pulled back. So uh, pretty much when it was almost a guarantee. So. Uh, the Fed already has mentioned they're going to be nimble, uh, which to me means that they are not set in stone with anything. They're going to see what the market's doing. Um, and so, so just remember, uh, you know, trusting the Fed is uh, not always in your best interest because they are very quick to change their minds, especially when the market uh, has moves like it has in the oil market, which is going to just destroy discretionary income and slow things down already naturally. So. Uh, that's that's kind of what I have my eye on. Uh, maybe some some short term pops and and some of these growth names have just been killed, and then uh, your 
alternative energy as well as you know oil companies as, as long as the oil keeps going up oil companies are a proxy to that and will probably keep going up too okay keeping an eye on oil and kind of bouncing off of that just back to you right now biden just confirmed uh, you know, the U.S. is off of the Russian oil supply. That is looking like it is having a positive effect on the market. Um, you know, things like Tesla and other areas of tech are moving higher, uh, whether that's based off that news or just anything else that's going on in the market. So definitely something to keep an eye out for uh, with those oil plays, EV plays, just things people are kind of circling around, as well as some of the rare metals and other stuff that's kind of factoring into this. Thanks for starting us out there, Jake. Okay, let's go on over to yourself, Ben. Same question. What have you been trading and a little bit of sentiment? Hey, yeah, I'm kind of surprised that sentiment. I mean, it, it's negative, but I thought it would be a lot worse given the headlines and given how the market uh, has has been quite weak, especially in growth and tech. Uh, so still waiting for that put call ratio to really scream at me, you know, buy. Uh, I'd like to see it above 1.2 and it's been it hasn't even hit 1.0 it's been trading like 0.93 0.95 which is elevated but it's not showing that extreme fear that usually uh proceeds like a capitulation type move where everybody says okay i've had enough and and throws in the towel so um still kind of waiting to see if that does transpire in the meantime though you know, like like Jake was saying, there's there's plenty of opportunities elsewhere, oil, commodities, those things staying hot. I came back into um, the shippers, uh, kind of where I'm watching retests on DAC, GSL. They had breakouts uh, and now kind of retesting those pivots. Uh, so I kind of and and really just dipping a toe in, not getting real aggressive. Um, day trading though has been great. I, I, you know, sticking with the themes that are working uh, like solar, solar has been really hot. Um, had a few days where things came in gently and now they're ripping again. If you look at ENPH and SEDG, um, those solar names and, you know, that kind of is a play off of oil. If you didn't want to get involved in oil directly, cause it's, so extended and a lot of those stocks are extended in the oil names um tan which is uh, t-a-n which is the solar etf uh up 10 percent today that was kind of a good way to get some exposure to this energy play without chasing up those extended names uh in oil and gas and gosh so many of those uh were were super super hot yesterday a lot of the smaller names 10, 20, 30% in a day. So you couldn't get involved there and chase those up. But um, I took advantage of of the little dip and pull back in solar um, and, and that's working out well. So short tech, long commodities, um, that's, that seems like that's the play right now. And you just, you know, continue to ride it until it doesn't work anymore. Uh, right now it's still working and, uh, so, so sticking with that. Okay. Short tech on commodities. Thank you, Ben. All right. Exclusive. Same question over to yourself. Hey, how's it going, man? Shout out to uh, Wolf for putting the space on and shout out to Jake and Ben. It's been uh, far too long since we've all had a space, but uh, it's good to hear you guys again. Um, yeah. You know, really nothing too separate from what they've already said. You know, it's, I agree 100% with what uh, both gentlemen have said so far. You know, it's a very, very news. I mean, in, in the 10 plus years I've been trading, it's been, I've never seen it such a news driven market. And, um, you know, things sell off and people dump money into something that they know nothing about. So, like, buying and selling in both directions is just extremely unpredictable unless you're watching news or unless you're following a momentum train. So it, it's become a situation where I agree with what Jake was saying. You have to be watching some sort of news and have some sort of self-awareness with things that you wouldn't normally care to watch or listen to. And, you know, it it just adds to, you know, what what the market has become. And it's just – it requires another tool on your tool belt um, in order to be a successful trader. You know, before news – you know, and I still don't really pay attention too much to the news, you know, unless it's some major catalyst that's something that's obviously going to affect, um, 
you know, the indexes and these major ETFs and stuff like that. But, you know, unless it's something major, I don't really pay too much mind to it. I look at the price action. I look at the history. I look at the, you know, the seasonality. I look at a lot of technical and fundamental factors and, you know, some of the micro and macroeconomics that go along with it. Um, That being said, it is a little bit more news driven and I don't like that, but I've had to make do with what I have. And some of these names that, you know, articles come out that could potentially affect it. I'm just prepared, um, but without bias. I'm not saying just because I see a bullish article, I'm immediately bullish. I'm saying that because there's an article, I'm going to be watching the specific stock for a potential move in either direction. Um, Because, you know, there's always people that sell the news, people that buy the news. There's there's always, you know, there's always a bear and a bull. You know, there's, there's, there can't be a bias. So, um, you know, obviously the energy, obviously the coals, oil, um, a lot of these um, less mentioned, I would say, socially less mentioned names have been performing. But really the time to get into them was back in October and November when you saw what seemed to be institutional accumulation um, at the beginning of these uh, possible future swing failure patterns. People were buying these up or institutions. And it was detectable. And I know a lot of people were talking about this on Spaces last year, um, towards the end of the year. And, um, you know, people have made some great money by getting in really early, um, into those, into those given sectors. So congrats to them. But, um, it's really just, sorry, alerts are flying off on Tesla and Microsoft and Amazon and Netflix. But, um, you know, it's really just a matter of being prepared and how quickly can you react, um, because it is a very reactionary market which means it's also a very difficult market to navigate if you're especially if you're not experienced um if you're not experienced with your broker if you're not experienced with price action or um when to execute a plan you know knowing when to buy and knowing when to sell is very very important in this kind of reactionary market so um yeah sentiment wise you know it, it's it's already been said but um yeah that that's just my opinion on what's going on currently but tomorrow it could be something else yeah, I see why your alerts are flying off over there. Tesla up 4% now on the day. A bunch of others moving as well. Okay, we are going to start going through some individual tickers. If you're in the audience and you have a ticker that you want to be charted, this is your time to do it. So let me know. I'm going to go ahead and put out a tweet. Just say, drop us some tickers that you would like to have charted. And once you see that, you can go in, drop whatever you want. If you quote tweet it, I'm sure we will get to them even faster. It's just something that'll stand out and we'll see above the others. But for now, let's throw out a couple and let's start out with Jake. So there's some interesting ones here. I do want to start with cyber since it seems to be something which is a bit under demand. So let's start out with CRWD and PLTR. Okay. <clears throat> CRWD, I think kind of threw some people for a loop. I think a lot of people thought this was going to just rip with the whole cyber attack potential and it's done nothing but just absolutely tank. Uh, But yeah, actually kind of shocking to see it, see it still red with the market uh, popping right now. But at the same time, you know, maybe I don't even know what the logic would be for this, for this to not uh, go green at this point, but it is still red. Um, and uh, and yeah, it's just uh, it's it's technically uh, got higher higher lows since the January twenty fourth low, so that's definitely something to keep an eye on. Um, and uh, and yeah, I mean, if you look at the longer term side of things, pretty ugly weekly candle. However, it is only Tuesday, so you know you can only really look at the weekly candle to gauge trend at this point. Um, rather than say, oh, that's a really good looking weekly candle. There's still three and a half days left of the week. So that can completely change. Monthly still looks uh, really rough. The main thing I would focus on, uh, the upside at least, is just this huge uh, resistance level, this anchor view app from the November highs. That acted as a pretty strong level of resistance back in early earlier this month. You did have a close of Above that line but then you just continue to move right back down um so we'll just have to see you know what happens here i'm not familiar with like the options chains or anything like that with this one um and that's kind of been a little frustrating like if you are trading options right now you need to be trading like this 
this week or next week or next week's expiration is the monthly expiration. But if you go further out than that, it is really hard to find liquidity in some of these, these names in the options chain. So um, that that's been a little frustrating because I generally am trading, you know, two to plus months out, especially with the VIX this high, you want to go out a little further. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, it, that's been very frustrating for me. So, you know, this would be an interesting one for me to look at. It's just, I'm assuming the options chains are probably pretty liquid here. And like I said, with traveling this week and just in general, I don't have time to be looking at things on a minute by minute basis. Uh, the, uh, the alerts are nice on TrendSpider for that, but you know, if I'm on a call, it's, it's still, you know, I can't, I can't be doing that if I'm on a call. So it's, it's, it's actually very frustrating right now for me to trade. That's why I only have this BLNK common stock position because that one looks incredibly strong. Uh, that is the only position I have open right now. I have it at like 2480 or something. Uh, so it is starting to move pretty nicely. And I mentioned that, you know, that would be a target above around 30 bucks. But CRWD actually looks decent if it if it had a, a decent daily candle close. And may, who knows, could be a laggard here. Um, but at the same time, you know, for me at least, I'd, I'd be looking to trade the options. And I, I just don't know if there's liquidity there. Uh, PLTR. I always get stuck with this one. Uh, nothing's really changed with this. I mean, it, it's... You do have uh, a decent candle here today, but that's the thing with this market. If you looked at every single chart yesterday, every chart almost looked the same. There, there was very little relative strength for a lot of these names. Obviously, uh, you know, BLNK was one that had relative strength yesterday. Um, but you looked at you looked at AMD, Shop, you know, PayPal. They all looked horrible, and they all pretty much capitulated this morning. Uh, and so, my point is, is every stock kind of looks the same at this point. Everything's kind of catching a bid. Uh, for PLTR, your main level would be around 12. I'm just going to say the, the VWAPs from around 12.75 to around 13.25. So until it can break above that, you're just still in a pretty solid downtrend there. Um, the weekly, you know, you're almost back to where this thing IPO'd at or the, the IPO high for that week. So this one just is not on my radar. Um, I think a lot of people try to trade it because they are, you know, they have government contracts and there was some thesis there with, with, you know, maybe they're getting going to get more business with all this craziness going on, but not a bad looking daily candle, but you know, if you want to trade this up to that 1275 to 1325, you know, that, that looks like a decent, uh, risk to reward trade, but past that, you'd really need to get through that VWAP uh, from January 4th, which is simply just uh, one of the times that we tested the resistance zone above. Okay. Awesome, Jake. Appreciate the insight there on those two. Yeah, certainly looking, you know, Crowd's one of the few in this industry that are profitable and also does have earnings this week, I believe. So, a couple things to look out for there. All right, we had several stocks submitted so far. Again, that tweet is out. It is pinned up top as well. So if you scroll to the top of your space, uh, you will see it up in the nest where it says drop a ticker. You want to be charted by our panel on spaces. Twitter is being weird right now, not really showing me the comment sections, but I can see them coming in in through my notifications. So let's go on over to Ben and let's do BBY as well as WHR. BBY. Best Buy recently got rejected at the 200-day moving average, uh, and that's coming in right around just above 110. Uh, so pulled back to 104. I'm kind of easing up there. It looks like that was a move, a gap on earnings. Uh, so it was up about 9% on a huge volume spike, up about 500% over average volume. So you have a power earnings gap there that that found resistance at the 200 day so now kind of come back fill that gap uh, and see if it can make the the turn here um, if it can make the turn kind of sets up like a little flag pattern as that volume eases uh, as it comes in so then you want to see if it can uh, come back out of that flag and then 
Uh, the obvious thing is it needs to reclaim that 200 day moving average, um, you know, there at 110. Then you start to think about can it take out the high? That was 112.96. That was the high of that uh, earnings day. So if you make the turn here and then can push above uh, that high of the earnings gap, then you've got a nice little window there. You've got another big gap off of the high at 140. 197 you get above is that about one 121 87 you get in there you're in an, a, a nice little window there where there was a gap uh, so I kind of like how this is is building out this cup here and uh, putting in a little handle below the the 200 day moving average so just need to see if it can if it can push back above has plenty of room to run uh, if it can. And then when when I'm looking at uh, with anchored VWAP attached, let's see where that comes in. So put an anchored VWAP on the day of the gap, uh, on that earnings gap. And that's going to come in at right about 1%. 07 10731 so back above 10731 buyers back in control since the gap that's what i would be looking for and then like i said uh the 200 day would be next uh the other one was whr whirlpool let's see whirlpool he below all Moving averages, the key moving averages, 10, 20, 50, 200, below all of those. Having a good day today, up 4%. Um, maybe if this can get back above 200, sets up like a double bottom pattern. You had 196.65 as a low of the prior base. It undercut that. If you can get back above there, but then, you know, you got that psychological level of 200. Uh, to be aware of. But if you can push back above there, uh, maybe give you a run back towards the 50 day and the 200 day. Not my style. Uh, I usually like to to trade the stuff that's already above uh, the 50 day and the 200 day and, and especially those shorter term moving averages to the 10 and 20. Uh, so I usually would wait until it's above those, turn those, at least those short term moving averages of the 10 and 20 back to the upside. Uh, but I do see some potential there if it can can make the turn here, get back above the 200 day. Uh, but I'd probably would keep that uh, very tight if I owned it. Uh, you've got a a low there uh, with the market on February 24th, 187. And if that fails, you could see low 170s rather quickly. So I would still be cautious. <clears throat> Okay. Staying cautious. Jake, you got a comment there? Sorry, I, I didn't realize I was off. Uh, wasn't muted. Um, no. Okay. All good. All right. Exclusive. Got two for you. One of them is your favorite Tesla, and the other one is AMD. Oh, Tesla. The, uh, the love child, the love-hate relationship. Man, I tell you what, man. It, Tesla is just so bipolar and so trend breaking it, it's just it just defies most logic when it comes to trading um you know a, a company of this size even when the volume is low it still doesn't do what you would expect it to do um to an extent um so obviously yesterday you know we, we took a trade in, in tesla on your space which paid today which is good um but tesla in general it's always a matter of where is it at in in terms of a major retracement? Where is it at in the terms of a major uptrend or downtrend? You know, the moving averages, I mean, it, it it's testing the 200-day moving average today, which is the balance I was hoping for, which is perfect. It worked out well. But Tesla is a, a stock that you have to be prepared for violent moves um, to the upside and the downside. Even when, like right now, the volume 
is still about 11 million in volume for the day um, left. And we still have plenty of time left in the day. But this surge that the market is seeing from obviously the the short-term rally we're seeing in, in the um, in the indices and these ETFs, but um, Tesla in general, I would really like to see this reclaim the COVID uptrend um, or the pandemic uptrend, I should say, which is, you know, in the upper 870s and 860s, you know, th- this stock can move within a week. The stock can move over 100 points in either direction. So Tesla is one of the few stocks I'll hold and I'll, I'll hold it even if it's down 90%. It's one of those it's one of those option trades that the implied volatility is always higher than most other stocks. And it's even though the premium is really high and it's a very liquid stock, it, it's still something that you can as an option trader, it, it's still something that you can predict based on um, the premiums. It's still something you can detect based on technicals. And fundamentally, you know, I think it, it, it's because a majority of the shareholders in Tesla are, um, I don't want to say a majority, but a lot of retail owns Tesla. That means that people are going to defy what you should think as like a hedge fund would do. Like if some major catalyst comes out that's really bullish, you know, people are going to overbuy or something that seems bad, they're going to sell. They're going to, it's going to capitulate, which is why we see these moves that we see, like we saw back in November like we saw back in um, December and this year, just just in, in late January, you know, the, these kind of moves are really predictable. But right now, Tesla's positioned to reclaim that 200 day moving average. And then we could potentially see, you know, a pretty sizable move um, back to the upper 800s in the next, you know, I would say within the next few weeks. So I'm not saying it's going to go there. Um, anything can happen with the geopolitical tensions right now. Um, with the crisis in Ukraine, so there, there's there's a lot of things that um, affect Tesla. But one of the biggest things that people fail to realize is Tesla is more than just an, uh, a vehicle company. They they make more than vehicles and batteries. Um, so there there's a lot um, that Tesla has going for it in the long term. Um, and anybody who's been holding it, you know, pre 2019. Um, like me, and I know a lot of people on, on Fintwit hold it from um, its early days when it was a laughing stock in the market. So, um, a- again, you know, over 242.15, uh, it's a decent long. Um, you've got you've, you've got some major resistance there at um, 839.40. So you can, you know, you have two levels of con- of confluence there as resistance. So I think a safe level would be 845 plus to long it. Um, I'm not going to be bearish on Tesla ever. I usually buy the dip and then I sell the rip. So um, that's my opinion on Tesla. What was the second one? AMD. AMD. That's another. Ironically, that's another trade we were talking about yesterday. Um, playing to the downside. You know, yesterday obviously you saw the SMH rejected a major pivot and then just collapsed. So all these semiconductor names, um, these these tech names, these chip manufacturers and computer cloud software, all these names, but AMD in particular, you know, I was looking for a bounce off of near the 99.35 level, which is just a pivot from January. So, you know, if we see the dead cat bounce, we have potential to move back into 113.28 territory. And now I'm not saying that's going to happen this week. That'd be awesome if it did. It has more than enough um, steam in, left in the engine to do that because, you know, the bulls were waiting for a really good buy opportunity, um, and, and so were the market makers. So um, I, I would say if it can close above 106.77 today, that'd be a really good um, swing indication. Um, that would also be above my short trigger at 106. So, yeah, that, that, that'd be a decent long um, back up to 113.28. Um, potentially this week, maybe next week. So if you want to avoid the volatility and um, theta decay going into the rest of this week, I'd recommend maybe a week or two out, monthly expiration. But you got to be careful with that too because, you know, th- those monthly expirations can get tricky as well. Okay. Keep an eye on 
Monthly expirations, yeah, for sure. With option contracts, these can get a little bit crazy. Okay, Jake, got two for you, Apple and Crocs. All right. Uh, <clears throat> by the way, uh, kind of holding Cuba right now, so I'm going to mute in, unless I'm talking. So one second, let me – what's What's the first one, Apple? Yep. All right, Apple, uh, Cuba. Um, you know, it doesn't look horrible. Uh, you did have you did have a nice flush. I mean, you know, the this is the mar- the market is so reactionary right now. So you know, what's happening right now, and what looks like a really good candle could be a complete complete uh, disaster tomorrow. So right now, you know, the main thing that I'd focus on, you do have this symmetrical triangle um, that I posted last night. And essentially, I'm actually using the the line chart rather than the um, the candles. So so with this one, I mean, you know, if we even if we move up to like 162, 163, you're still kind of retesting that previous support. Uh, so this would really need to get above like 165 for me to get too interested on the long side. For now, it just looks like a breakdown and a retest potentially of uh, the support. Um, so it's, like I said, you, you really have to have a news source in front of you right now, literally at every single time, uh, you're looking at the market to see what's moving it because that's all that's moving the market right now. So technicals definitely still work in a news driven market, but you just have to be a lot more nimble. Um, so right now it looks like a breakdown and just a potential retest of that support that it broke down through. And then the other one was... Was what? The other one was going to be Crocs. Crocs. Um. Wow, this thing's gotten destroyed. Not not surprising to be honest. Um. So yeah, I mean, this thing is just in a massive downtrend, pretty much from the highs back in November. Looks pretty similar to other names out there, at least in the growth side of things. Um. And for now, just, I mean, if you look at the other times we've pretty much stair-stepped down, this this looks just like another candle in that in that stair-step for now. Uh, I don't have the moving averages up, but I would assume all of them are pointing down at this point. Uh, 200 days starting to curl to the downside. So, you know, in, until until some of those start curling back up, you're still in a pretty strong downtrend. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Jake. Uh, while we're actually on the notion there um, on TrendSpider, just talking about what we're using with it, I wanted to once again thank the TrendSpider account for being on here today. And also, uh, we have been kind of pointing out different features that people can use with uh, technical analysis and charting um, to people in the crowd. So we've talked over things in the past, like uh, we talked about, well, specifically on the TrendSpider platform last week. We went over a couple different features like insider trading, the options that you can see, anchored VWAP things like that. Um, and one of the ones that I want to just go over real quick here is actually stock scanners. So when you're hearing from some of these speakers up, you will often say, hey, there's you know an anchor view up pinch or there's a gap up on volume or there's something along these lines. And a lot of people in the crowd often get questions like, how can I find these stocks ahead of time, right? Because that's the way where you make the real money is not by following someone else into the trade, but being able to create your own scanners, create your own paths to discovering stocks in these positions. So I want to just take a couple minutes right here and go over for those in the audience, essentially where you can find these scanners, because a lot of people always ask me, where am I going to find this? What website? And also you can utilize other people's scanners too, especially inside TrendSpider. If that's something that you're using, if you're actively using TrendSpider, I know myself is, Jake, Ben, we're using TrendSpider. Um, This is a really powerful thing. So I pinned up top a scanner kind of sample. And Jason, do you want to explain a little bit more into that? Yeah, absolutely. So like you said, you can definitely scan for all kinds of different things on the platform. Um, We have, when you click on the market scanner button in the top right corner, that opens up the scanner at the bottom. Um, On the far left hand side there, you see a list of what we call shared scanners. So these shared scanners 
they kind of run the gamut as far as what they look for. You know, some are looking for bullish conditions. Some are looking for bearish conditions. Um, most of them are hashtagged with kind of what they're looking for. Um, price conditions, indicator conditions, candlestick pattern conditions, earnings dates, dividend dates, split dates, news content, analyst estimates, watch lists. You can scan for so many different sorts of scenarios. Um, in the scenario that you have pinned, what it's specifically looking for is a gap up um, on uh, increased volume. Um, and it's looking for essentially just a green candle today as well. So not only did we gap up, but we're green on the day. So we haven't maybe put, come back and filled that gap. Um, and and again, increased volume. And for the increased volume piece, we're using RVOL, which is relative volume. Um, we've got everything on this scan using the daily time frame. So uh, looking for today's open greater than yesterday's high, that would be your gap up. Looking for RVOL greater than a constant value of 0.5. Uh, for those of you who don't know what RVOL is, relative volume is just, essentially, it's just that. It's looking for how the current volume compares to the average volume. Uh, so if, if you're looking for our vol of 0.5, you're essentially looking for the current volume today is equal to or greater than um, half the average daily volume. And since it's only a couple hours into the session for it to have half the average volume today, um, that is significant, right? That's saying that we very likely will do at least average volume, potentially above average volume. And the more um, you require for your volume uh, requirements, uh, the higher that value can be. Um, so yeah, that's that's really what this is looking for. You know, it spotted a handful of oil names today: XOM, CVX. And CAT. I'm going to run it here real quick on my end and see if anything new comes up. Yeah, it's still just those two names, CDX and CAT. Uh, so that's uh, that's the idea behind that particular scanner. Awesome. And then the one other thing I want to put in there is a lot of people are going to say, "Well, I don't know what to put into a scanner, right? I, I don't I don't know if I want high volume or gap up or something like that." But inside of Trend Spider, Jake's using it, Ben's using it, Brian Shannon's using it, and they all have created their own scanners, which you can subscribe to also, right? That's correct. Yeah, Ben's got a handful in there. I actually love Ben scans. Um, been using them since for the past two years, Jake scans as well. Uh, so yeah, so if you are a TrendSpider user, you can create your own unique scans. You can share links to those scans via social media. Um, a lot of TrendSpider users do do that. Again, Ben and Jake do that. I share mine from time to time as well. Dan, um, founder of the company, shares his scans from time to time. Um, so yeah, there is definitely that sharing component as well. Perfect. So for anyone that wants to try this out, uh, Transpire has a completely free uh, seven-day trial. You can try out. And then if you want to get 35 freaking percent off, I have uh, the best discount code out there on Transpire. And I'm going to post it up in a minute. And if anybody wants it uh, directly to them, feel free to go ahead and DM me. And I will shoot you over. First, you're getting the DMs. It'll be a good time. We'll chat. And two, Shoot that over. I'll give you the discount code. You'll be able to check out what's going on with TrendSpider. You'll be able to subscribe. This is going to be a massive help because otherwise it feels like you're always just looking at the same 10 stocks. This is how you find new stuff and you break out and you actually find things before you just follow someone else into a trade. So that's what I want to say on that. Jake, anything you want to add on the topic? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the thing the thing I'd mentioned too is you can scan watch lists too. It's not like you have to go scan a random stock, uh, excuse me, a random index. Like you can scan through a watch list but for those that are, you know, used to trading things that they know. That's how I, you know, look at the market. I don't find a random stock and just trade it. I have to be watching it or have traded it before. So, you know, you can scan watch lists as well. Love it. Love it. Yeah. It's a great part. If I could add okay. one, if I could yeah. add one other thing too, if you have ideas, for scans, but you don't know exactly how to go about writing them out yourself, hit us up in chat. We've got live customer support guys in chat Monday through Friday, 20 hours per day. Um, those guys are all well-versed on 
on you know the entire platform. If you've got ideas for scans but don't know how to write them out, hit us up in chat with those ideas. Ask for some help. You know, we can help you build out scans as well. Perfect. Looking forward to it. All right. That is pinned up top now. So if anyone wants to take a look, it is in the nest. Remember, completely free trial. If you don't like it, you don't have to pursue it. But if you do like it, you can get 35% off of your subscription. Let's get back into some more stocks here. And we're going to throw a couple over to Ben. I just have to get my notifications slowed. All right, Ben, let's do TTD. That is Trade Desk along with Cost, C-O-S-T. So TTD all the way down to 60. Wow. In just a couple of days, it, it's pretty incredible in this market. I was uh, just looking at TTD a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, looking for it to push through like 85 level. I had a um, descending trend line off of the highs too, coming in at about 80. Once it sliced back below, there was a straight drop down. Uh, and now you know, $20 lower from where I was looking at it before. They had um, pretty good reaction uh, to their earnings. And they had that day on the, the 24th uh, where the stock was up almost 12% on big volume. And now you're uh, back below the low of that day just over the last two sessions. So, uh, definitely has work to do here. It probably looks like it wants a retest uh, that prior low at 55. Um, ideally, you get a little undercut of that $55 level and then reclaim it. I like to look for that often. Um, so, you know, that may be something to look for on continued weakness. On strength, it just has so much work to do now. There's so much damage there with the uh, lower highs and the 200 day moving average uh, kind of they're they're all kind of a confluence above there uh, the 10 day 20 day 50 day 200 day all 18 20 percent almost above where price is uh, so maybe if the Nasdaq gets its act together for a bounce you can uh, get a, a run back towards those levels but being below all of those moving averages um, and it's it's you know, they're all declining now. It has a lot of work to do. Uh, but the, the thing that I would look for here, if I was really looking uh, to get involved, would be the undercut of the $55 level and then wait for price to reclaim it. Uh, that, that would be the way I'd like to play it. Um, if I was looking on, on strength, if I really wanted to just come in once I thought the overall market was a little bit healthier and just play it on strength, I'd probably be looking for back above like mid seventies. That would put it back above the 10 day, 20 day, 50 day. Uh, so yeah, just a really, really ugly uh, last few days in that decline. Um, I'm sorry. What was the other one? Cost. Oh, cost. Yeah. Costco. Not bad at all here. Looks like it's putting in a little bit of a cup. You have a higher low there. You're above the 10, the 20, 50 day moving average. Um, yeah, 571.49. That's the level to watch above. That's the, the important pivot in this base. Uh, so I'd be looking for that to push through there on big volume. Uh, good volume coming up the right side here too, uh, and this this group uh, doing really well. Uh, so the uh, retail major discount chains um, acting well. You know Walmart. I know I looked at it the other day. It's still trying to get above the 200 day, but that's one that tends to uh, run this with it sometimes. Uh, Target is another one that had a good. Uh, move off of its earnings reaction so you gotta in this name you gotta not just watch costco and how it acts you kind of want to watch the rest of the group too because a lot of times uh, half the move is is related to how the rest of the group looks uh, but just isolating costco itself probably one of the the best looking within that group 
Uh, and if volume continues to come in as it climbs the right size, in good shape there. I'd like to see it turn that 50-day higher. It's trading above the um, the 50-day moving average, but the, it's still kind of declining a little bit. So if you turn that 50-day moving average back to the upside where it's rising, uh, you could expect to, that to act as support. And then, you know, the VWAPs that we use off of the high year-to-date anchored VWAP, uh, anchored VWAP off of the, the recent swing lows, uh, you're trading all uh, above that. So that's definitely a good sign and, and shows that uh, buyers are in control there. Perfect. Thank you, Ben. Okay, exclusive. Uh, I got two for you. One of them is going to be MU. And the other is going to be Walmart. You said MU? MU and Walmart. Okay. All right, so MU was another, you know, similar thing was what I was just talking about earlier with the semis. Um, really beaten down. You know what I mean? It's It's been really been beaten down, but I think right now... We've gotten a solid double bottom here, and we're already seeing a nice move back through a few pivots. I'm going to just go ahead and update my chart real quick and delete these. Cause... All right, so if we can get a move through the 200-day moving average at 79.85, that'd be a really good uh, that'd be a really good chance for bulls to kind of add some volume to their to their rally. Um, and we could see a move back into the 80s. Um, ideally, if I had to give a dollar target um, for the next week or two, 82.04 plus. So, um, and, and again, this, this is going to depend 100% on the sector. It's going to depend on the SMH. It's going to depend on the Qs, the SPY, um, and even the IWM slash IWO. So we're going to be watching it. Um, we were talking about this today in the group. Um, it wasn't on Twitter or nothing, but... Um, it was definitely a name worth watching at the current levels it was um, as of yesterday, right below that, right near that 75.52 pivot. So um, really big level to reclaim. Um, if I had to guess, let me do some quick. If we can get through, other than the 200-day moving average, if we can break and hold 79.26 today, I'd say probably within the next week or two we could see that move above um, 3A2 to the dead cap bounce at 82.55, which would be ideal, um, right below the 100 MA. So um, there, there's there's a few levels of resistance to, to get above, but um, again, closing above 79.26 is going to be a pretty big deal. Um, so we'll, we'll see if we can get that. And what was the second ticker? Walmart. We can know I love me some Walmart. So um, Walmart finds itself um, between a cluster of pivots. I actually have this posted um, on my Twitter feed, so you can actually get those levels if you guys want to, and just scroll down to Walmart. Um, the levels I have, and these are from yesterday, but they're still relevant um, from before, but the levels I have right now are 140.12, 140.67, 141.11, 141.11, and 142.37. Um, and a few levels above that, but we, we need to break that 142.37 level to, before we get another attempt to the upside. Um, but Walmart has been strong. The volume is a little bit low. Um, it's remained low other than the close and the open, um, where you usually see most of the volume anyways. But, um, you know, Walmart's one of, those, one of those stocks that I've traded a lot more often as of the end of last year than I usually do in general um, because it, it's just kind of been range-bound. Um, you know, ever since it ever since it broke into the all-time highs back in uh, 2020, it's just kind of been in that range of uh, 120. What was it? 126 to 155 in that area. So, um, you know, I, I would really like to see this stock back above uh, 145, um, but it, it's got some work to do before it can get there. Um, and ideally, if we can close out the week above. I'd say 142.50 would be a safe level, which would be above all the moving averages that are relevant. 
then we can get a sizable move um, back into the upper four, 140s. So uh, 146.37 would be the monthly target if we can get some continuation. But um, we're, we're seeing, obviously, especially from last week, we're seeing a really strong um, push to get back into these levels that it's currently at. So uh, I don't think it's going to be reversing anytime soon. I'm in a major way, but um, I'm bullish long term for sure. They have dividends, uh, what they uh 17th uh payment out on april 4th so um yeah that's a that's a decent catalyst to watch for um the run up or the run down either way but um you can you can put that on your watch list too if you want 17th and the fourth okay awesome keeping those on the watch list yeah definitely always watching walmart with the strength in this market here's a couple for you that are in uptrends jake unp as well as CCI. Okay, and I, I do have a hard stop today at uh, in about five minutes. Uh, UNP, as you mentioned, definitely in an uptrend. Uh, Union Pacific, I, get, I, I wasn't sure of the ticker. Uh, yeah, huge move last week. Uh, this week so far, kind of, kind of iffy. But um, one thing I'd kind of look at potentially as an, a head and shoulders on the 65 minute chart. And, uh, that is kind of over the last week or so. Um, so definitely 263 would be an area that you'd want to see a close above to really get going. Uh, and then on the daily, you got a, you know, a, a little bit of a pullback. If you anchor a view up from that February 24th low, um, you didn't get all the way down to it, but it's around 252. Uh, but I think the main area you'd want to to get above is around two sixty three fifty. Um, then if you can close above that on the sixty five minute candle, that head and shoulders would be invalidated. And then the second one, the second one there was CCI. Not familiar with this one either, but definitely in a really nice trend to the upside have a really strong flag here on the 65 minute chart. So that would be the main thing I'm looking at. Um, this one does look pretty good. So I'm not sure what this company does or honestly what it is. Um, but the, the, the chart definitely shows a really strong bull flag here on the 65 minute chart. And then on the daily chart, uh, you can just kind of see that bull flag forming a little better on the daily chart as well. So that, that looks pretty, pretty good. Um, you just kind of have chopped around this one uh, over the last several months. So, you know, you really want to look at getting above that VWAP uh, from the December highs, which is literally exactly where we're at. So it's definitely having trouble getting through that that December twenty week of December twenty seventh uh, VWAP, and that's right at one seventy nine fifty or so. But if it can get above that, it actually looks pretty good. Perfect. Uh, I will, since you have uh, to go in a couple of minutes, just want to see if you have any closing remarks, Jake, as well as, you know, advice for retail approaching this market and just any other thoughts on the indices in general. Um, yeah, I mean, unless you can be in, the comp- in front of the computer constantly and, and pretty much have a new source in front of you, you're going to be essentially at a disadvantage right now. Uh, I will mention, you know, if you are trading options, uh, from what I've seen, it, and I, I really don't trade anything less than a month out, and that's even pretty short for me, there's just not a lot of liquidity a, mo- out, a month out unless you're looking at the indices or, or something like that. So if you do want liquidity, the indices are still where you're going to get it. Um, and just keep in mind the VIX is really high. Premiums are very very expensive right now. Um, so, so that will play into, you know, your, your profits, you know, if, if the VIX is at 20 at 20, 25 and you have a stock that goes up 10% a day, your, your contracts may rip hundreds of percent if they're a month or two out. Whereas now, you know, you, you may get, I was looking at, uh, I was looking at like Delta yesterday. Delta was down like 10 or 11% on the spot price. And the options for this week expiring were only up like a hundred percent. 
generally those would be up hundreds, if not more percent. Uh, and that's just a function of the VIX being really high. So just keep in mind the VIX does affect all options pricing. It's not just pricing on the S&P 500. That's why, you know, even if you're watching some stocks right now and you saw that initial impulse move up, um, you know, you actually may see some of your your options pricing stalling a little bit because the VIX is starting to pull back and that's that's affecting the implied volatility of these options. So you really got to be like in and out uh, to really make some some big money here. And the problem is, is you just you know, if you're trading ten thousand dollars or more in some of these options contracts, you know, you may be most of the volume and you never want to be in that situation. So just if you're looking for liquidity, look at the indices. Awesome. Really, really good stuff there. Cool. Jake, um, anything else on the trend spider side that you want to say? And then I'll throw it over to exclusive because I see his hand up. Uh, no, not really. Just, um, you know, appreciate everybody uh, who is a customer of TrendSpider. And um, as Gov mentioned, there is a there is a nice discount code from him that he posted earlier. And um, and yeah, definitely appreciate everybody trying it out if it's something you want to give a shot. Uh, and if you don't have a lot of time to look at the charts all day, you know, the alert system is something you definitely could check into. It's not alerting you like signals. It's alerting you whatever you are w- watching. So if you have a an alert on a trend line above or a view app above, you know, you're, you're going to get alerted. So you don't have to look at the screen all day. Um, so that's, that's something that may help in this, this, this current market. And then we do have the news feed from Benzinga, which as I mentioned, this is a very news driven market. So you definitely want to have some type of news feed in front of you um, when you're looking at the markets right now. Exactly. Perfect. Well said. Thank you, Jake. Appreciate you being on here. And yeah, I had a friend that I just got on Transpire last week and they sent me like 10, 10 texts in a row this morning about how much they love it. So I recommend everybody at least gives it a shot. Uh, again, free to try, 35% off. Biggest discount you're going to see out there is in the link above or you can DM me and I'll send it to you. All right, awesome. Thanks, Jake. Exclusive, I see your hand up. Yeah, I was just going to um, shed some light on um, CCI. Um, Crown, Ca- uh, Crown Castle International. So it's actually it's actually a really good company. Um, they actually present um, today at 6:45. P- I'm sorry, 6:35 Eastern at the Morgan Stanley um, Tech Media and Teleconference. Um, so and, and I personally own Common Stock. So this is something that I've been holding for a while that I'm going to continue holding, um, despite the violent moves we've seen recently in the past few months. But you know, Crown Castle is. I think it's 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 an underrated stock compared to its competitors. Um, I know you know American Tower Corporation. I know Public Storage and Well Tower. They have they have similar stocks that are considered competitors of them. But I still think, from a fundamental perspective, this is a good company to be in long term. And right now, it's at a actually. Let me pull up the chart. And right now, it's actually in a situation where we could see a nice move, um, and it looks like it's even starting to form a nice cup and handle. So what I would really like to see is within the next week or two, we might see this stock up about 10, 15 points. Um, That's just my opinion. I'm not saying that it's going to happen. There's a a major pivot right there at 179.95 to break, but... You know, it's poised to make a move back to the upside. Um, and, and from a personal opinion, I just think that it's one of those companies that, you know, it, it's got a lot going for it. It's got a lot of good buy and hold ratings. No one's really saying, hey, you need to get rid of this. Um, percentage wise and fundamentally, it's really good. It's positive um, on the raw stochastics, the RSI, moving averages. Everything is pointing from a neutral to neutral bullish perspective. So um, I like it long. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to let people know that that conference was uh, this evening. So if you want to check them out, that's a good opportunity to find out about them. Perfect. Appreciate the info there on CCI. Definitely a popular one that I've seen coming up on my timeline. Also, we've been running for a full hour now. We'll maybe go another 10-ish, 15-ish minutes. Um, and, then, and then wrap up. But if anybody hasn't already, please be sure to be checking out our incredible speakers, exclusive Ben, of course, Jake, who is just on here, top notch. Obviously, they'll have over 100,000 followers. They're doing great stuff with their communities, giving out tons of free content daily on here. They also have paid services. I know Ben has his newsletter, exclusive as his Discord. 
TrendSpider, we've talked about. I see people that are in my DMs right now asking for that code. I will send it to you. Really good stuff all around. Stock market news. Do you want to throw out a couple of names? Sorry, I didn't come to you sooner. 